Welcome to another episode of Saturdays. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the men in black. When you hear the men in black, you probably think of the 1987 movie starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. In the movie, their characters monitor extraterrestrials on Earth. One of their jobs is to visit people who have claimed to be visited by aliens. They use a special device that erases all memory of their experience. Some people believe that that movie was based off of real-life government agents that wear black suits and visit those who claim to have had alien encounters. June 24th, 1947 was when the men in black were first sighted, or at least first talked about publicly. A man named Harold Dahl was near the eastern shore of Washington's Maury Island gathering logs when he noticed a donut-shaped obstacle hovering about a half mile above his boat. One of them fell from the sky, followed by rain, metallic debris, some of which hit his son on the arm, and unfortunately hit the family dog who didn't survive. Dahl was able to take pictures of the aircraft with his camera, which he later showed his supervisor, Fred Chrisman. Chrisman was a skeptic. So he went back to the scene to look for himself and saw the strange aircraft with his own eyes. The following morning, Dahl was visited by a man in a black suit. They end up at a local diner. Dahl was told to never speak of the incident, and if he did, bad things would happen. Those supposed events of Maury Island have continued to fuel conspiracy theories to this day even though the government deemed this story a hoax. But why would the government want to suppress information about UFOs? As the theory goes, it's because aliens are closer to us than you think. They might actually be everywhere. And if ordinary citizens realized just how real the threat was, there would be mass panic and a breakdown of social order. That might be where the men in black come in. They're assigned by the government to monitor these alleged sightings to possibly prevent mass hysteria associated with the sightings. There have been many claims of people encountering the men in black. Most of them share similar experiences and almost everyone describes them as awkward or weird. Some people believe that they themselves are aliens. Some people say that they have very unusual facial appearances with no hair or no eyebrows, and an extremely pale figure. In 1955, Dr. Albert K. Bender, who was a well-written and extremely intelligent researcher who founded the International Flying Saucer Bureau, was prepared to unveil a paper that would prove the U.S. government had, to one degree or another, covered up proof of UFOs he planned to publish his finding in a space review. That was until he was visited by the men in black. He claims that three men dressed in black visited him at his home and warned him against pursuing the topic of UFOs any further. The men left Bender scared for his life and he immediately shut down all research and the Flying Saucer Bureau. Many people who knew him claimed that he had changed after this encounter. His later works were rambly, almost unreadable, and he seemed to live his life in constant anxiety and terror. It was said that he still received mysterious phone calls with nobody on the other end until the end of his life in 2002. Danny Gordon was a radio personality who became interested in UFO sightings. Multiple people across the country had claimed to have seen bizarre objects flying in the sky, and Gordon decided to investigate. Gordon became obsessed with getting photos of objects, including one where an entire school bus of students saw a UFO flying over a shopping mall as Gordon took photos. Eventually, Gordon snapped a few photos at extremely close range that allegedly verified they were not of this world. However, strange things began happening to Gordon. 
he received a phone call from a man who claimed to be ex-military and warned him that his research could cost him everything and urged him to stop for his family's sake. Gordon was also interviewed by two men in black suits who claimed to work for a magazine publication. Not long after the interview, Gordon realized all his photos were missing and contacted the magazine for information. They claimed to have never heard of him, much less commissioned an article about him. Not long after, Gordon suffered a heart attack and his doctor warned him that all the research and stress was jeopardizing his health. Gordon gave up the story and was never bothered again. Even celebrities have encountered these men in black. Dan Aykroyd, who's a well-known UFO enthusiast, has spoke about his encounter before. Well, what happened was we, we, we sold the show to, uh, to Sci-Fi Channel and uh, it was called Out There and I basically interviewed all of the people that I admired uh, in various fields of study like uh, Colin Andrews from the Crop Circle Movement, uh, Linda Moulton Howe, the expert on cattle mutilations, John Mack. Um, and let me just put a pin in things right there because John Mack has taken the study of abductions, UFOs, right out through the other, uh, other side and he's going, yes, we know they're here, we know they're coming, we know people have been taken, we know there's experimentation going on, we know people have been told about agendas. What we now have to do is use that as a key and as a motivation to socially transform this planet to a more peaceful, more loving, more tolerant state. So his movement, the, the movement for social change, has just accepts as a fact abductions, UFOs, interplanetary uh, 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 intervention, and what he's doing is taking it out through the positive side of it and saying, now we must use it to, to socially transform, and I think his message is great. But I talked to him, I talked to the Allagash guys who were taken in the canoe on that trip in Pennsylvania. I, um, I mean, and I, the last show, the last show we did, I had both Bassett, who uh, has the, the UFO time clock, and then Greer. Both Bassett and Greer were there. They were my two guests for the day. Well, the show was canceled that afternoon. And um, I was outside. In, before I knew it was cancelled, in between the interviews. And uh, I was outside and Britney Spears called me because she wanted to, me to appear on Saturday Night Live with her. And so I picked up, I was outside having a cigarette, the phone rang. Uh, I, I, oh Britney, how you doing? Oh, sure, of course I will. I turned away like this, I turned back and there was a black Ford across the road, a black Ford sedan. And I, I was trying to look at the plate and the plate seemed kind of like fuzzy and I was, you know, definitely a police car. And two guys were there, and a big, big, tall guy got out of the back seat. And he stood in the street on, um, on 42nd Street, it was. We, we were at 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. And he looked right at me. And literally, I mean, I was on the phone. Hey, oh, sure, of course I'd like for the show. Saw the Ford, went back like this, turned back like a half second later, and it was gone. And that car did not go past me. It did not make a U-turn, because I would have seen 42nd Street. I would have seen that thing take a U-turn and go away. That car vanished. That car was a cloaked vehicle of some type. And whether this was like a warning to me, because the guy cut out of the back seat, gave me a real dirty look. That car vanished. I know what I saw. And, uh, you know, I, I, it, was, it was just this fast. It was, oh, hi, Brittany, sure. Oh, of course, I'd love to. Guy gives me a dirty look. Oh, well, sure, car gone. That's what happened. And uh, then two hours later, uh, we were told we were not to continue taping and the show was cancelled and none of them would air. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Was that, uh, was that an MIB experience? You know, black helicopters, uh, you know, military uh, abductions that happen. Sometimes people are taken and they talk about then being visited by, you know, military personnel and re debriefed about their abduction. Was it, you know, was it technology associated with some of these beings that are visiting that wanted to warn me off or that wanted to give me verification that I was on the right track I don't know but I do know I, I did I did turn back a second later and I you know it takes so long for an automobile accelerating from zero to 40 miles an hour to reach the corner of 8th Avenue and 42nd Street going past me and then pulling a u-turn and going out towards Times Square I would have seen that car 
And I looked around. I mean, I, I was looking for that thing. It was gone. So, um, I, I don't know. The tapes exist. I have them. We're going to try to repackage them. We might put them out on DVD. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to leave you with a few photos that are alleged to be actual photos of the real-life men in black. So, let me know what you guys think. Are the men in black real? Have you seen the men in black? And as always, just please remember to like this video if you like this video. And I'll see you guys next Saturday.